Elite Dangerous Odyssey is getting ever closer, and last week Frontier for the first time showed off a playthrough of a mission. In this particular case it was a heist mission. Now we've seen that in action uh, very recently, last night in fact on the official Elite Dangerous livestream, Frontier discussed some additional details that before now we haven't heard about, so uh, in this video I'm going to briefly discuss some of those. Now there's been a lot of different observations about the uh, mission that Frontier showed off, but one area that really stood out, an area of concern for many people, was the AI. Now, as Frontier were very clear right from the beginning, they were playing on a pre-alpha build, a very old build. Uh, they said last night that the AI has been improved since then, so hopefully that's a substantial improvement. No real details on how they were improved, but just that the AI is now better. Um, they also went on to say that the AI they were fighting against in the video were lower rank. We can see that by the indicated mark or the indicated rank above the AI's head. So in general, there will be additional or higher ranked AI to fight against, and these should be both uh, able to absorb more damage. A little bit concerned that potential bullet sponges there, but that aside, they should also be more intelligent. Another factor that will play into the difficulty of AI is going to be the type of armor that they're wearing. Basically, any person that's wearing the top military spec armor is going to be a very large challenge. All of this, though, does lead to another area of concern, of course, which is whether or not these missions can be achieved in single player. Can you do them solo? Apparently, yes, you can, although they will be a little bit more difficult without the ability to get assistance from others. So the question of difficulty quite naturally leads to the, well, the possibility of death and mission failure. So we know now that if you die, uh, you actually fail the mission and you get the option of where to respawn. If you have a ship, you can choose to respawn on the ship, or alternatively you can respawn at the nearest base. If you don't have a ship, then the only option is to respawn at the base. The question of what you lose upon death is very much a question well, apparently you can't drop or lose weapons, so all the uh, engineering you've put into your weapons, these are completely safe. But you'll still lose anything that's being carried in your backpack. So that means anything you've collected during your missions, anything you've collected during your exploration, has the potential to be lost. There is a permanent inventory, this is completely separate from your backpack, but Frontier as yet haven't detailed where that permanent inventory is. I'd suspect it's probably in your ship. Now, in terms of storage capacity for the backpacks, this will vary according to the type of suit you're actually wearing. The scavenger suit has the largest capacity, whilst combat suit has the smallest capacity. The combat suit will also have to use some of that storage capacity to fill it with various consumables that will be required to get past security systems within bases and settlements. Now, the heist mission overall was performed in a stealthy manner. The uh, guys sneaked into the base but were a little bit gun blazing coming out once they'd been detected. Apparently they did try the gun ho blazing going in, but it didn't work out too well as they died a lot. But here they're just reiterating the point that missions have multiple approaches. You can either do them gun ho or you can do them stealthy, or indeed whatever other method you can come up with. Another point they were making here then is that they used a bit of artistic license to get the video put together. And this was because they were using various builds, some of them apparently fairly old. Effectively, what they wanted to do here was convey what missions will actually play out like. And personally speaking, I think this is much better than giving us a dev diary, which was usually full of PR speak. I'd rather see a bit of a hands-on approach, even if that's not necessarily from the best or latest build. So definitely a good on Frontier for taking this route. So the release is still just under, what, three months away, so they got a fair bit of time to get some work done on this. The alpha itself, which is going to start on the 29th of March, is apparently going to be around about six weeks long, although Frontier said, the Frontier community team said they will need to confirm that just to double check, but it does look to be around about that long at the moment. That then leads into the question as to whether or not there will be a beta phase after the alpha. I guess we'll have to see, but hopefully we'll find more out about that very soon. Moving on to a few other points Frontier brought up in the uh, live stream. As we know, uh, there's going to be no Zero-G stuff whatsoever in Elite Dangerous Odyssey, so Frontier just reiterated that, just confirmed that. Um, changing weapons and suits, where can you do this? Well, apparently you can change out your equipment whilst in an SRV or a ship. Talking of ships and SRVs, it will actually be possible to drive other people's SRVs, which is going to be a nice touch. 
As for boarding other people's ships, you can physically do this as long as you're in a wing with them. But other players can also refuse a boarding permission if they so want, which will prevent random people getting on board your ship, even if for some reason you've also winged up with them. So uh, some fine control there, basically giving you some options. Sticking with the subject of combat for the moment, you may remember in the previous dev diaries and concept art seeing some images of something called a frontline solutions. Now we've speculated previously, I've speculated previously that this is a way to get into a big combat, possibly a death matches and that type of thing. Well, in the live stream yesterday, Frontier did say that frontline, frontline solutions is indeed a way to get into a large scale battles. I didn't reveal any more details, but I started to think my speculation on this may indeed be correct. One question I had myself when watching the heist mission playthrough was about the settlements. There was a whole load of bu uh, buildings there, and I was wondering whether or not it would be possible to enter most of these. Well, apparently every single building that we could see in the settlement can be visited and entered. And each of the buildings has a variety of things to see and interact with, so at that particular side of things I'm very much looking forward to seeing. Uh, talking of looking forward to seeing things, one thing I was hoping for was to see uh, rings, planetary rings, of casting shadows down on the worlds. Apparently uh, that's not going to be a thing, which is a bit on the unfortunate side, but I guess it means it's just one of those things that isn't changing. After all, rings don't cast shadows at the moment. But talking of other things outside of combat, ring systems there, there are plenty of other things that will be there. Frontiers have said that they are keen to show off exploration and point of interest stuff before the Alpha actually starts. There's things such as crashed ships to explore, uh, both for scavenging and, well, exploration in general, going around and finding plants and other such things. So getting some footage out there on those aspects is something that Frontier are aiming for, uh, no time frame on that just yet. So that brings us to an end of this video, a whole bunch of information there, getting closer to the release. Let me know what you're looking forward to in Odyssey. And what particular parts stand out for you? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.